Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a Physics 7a practice problem on the topic of uh, microscopic thermal energy. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like, it really helps our channel. So this is today's practice problem. You're given three moles of a diatomic ideal gas at 500 K, all modes are active. We have to classify the modes, compute heat capacity, figure out the thermal energy of the sample, figure out the energy in a single mode, on average, then figure out the average x-direction velocity of a single particle, and then we're gonna do an experiment of, uh, that involves cooling the gas. All right, so let's get started. Um, so as you can see, I have the instructions copied out, the equations on the quiz, as usual, the link to the empty PDF version of the quiz is on the description. So let's just go ahead and get started. Now, uh, the first part is pretty easy because this is a diatomic gas, ideal gas. And we have to, oh, and all of the modes are active. So we have to classify them and then compute heat capacity. Well, the classification, I'm just going to copy from this, which I just pulled out of the trash can. Um, from another video that I just did, but basically the total is seven modes and these are the modes. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that answer. Now, in terms of the explanation, I just did a 20 something minute video with the explanation about why this is the case. So I'm not really going to bother in explaining all of this again. So I'm just going to copy that. And if you have any questions and I will refer you to that video which should be you know uploaded at the same time as this one so I'm just gonna go ahead and just copy my answer and then two kinetic rotational and now in terms of co computing the heat capacity what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this equation right here which it was given on the quiz um, which is that little c um, volume per mole is one half r number of modes per particle. So little c is equal to one half r was given on the quiz, so 8.31 and then times seven. So little c is, oh, where's my calculator? calculator is. Calculator time, um, one half times 8.31 times seven is 29.08, 29.08. And this is um, Jules Kelvin Boroso per mole. And we want the entire of the three moles, so big C is just number of moles times little c. So I just multiply 3 times 29.08, and final answer is 87.25. I took away the moles, so this is just joules per Kelvin final answer. So um, this part I explained in another video and this is just, you know, putting things on an equation, multiplying times the appropriate numbers. So not a lot to comment on that. What's the thermal energy of this sample? Again, I'm going to refer to the equation that was given uh, to us on the quiz. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this equation and then substitute some numbers. So E thermal is equal to one half number of moles R temperature times number of modes 
per particle, in this case molecule, because this is a diatomic, but whatever. Okay, I needed to go back and just check something real quick. I made a mistake. And I was kind of hesitant about this, but you know, that's why it's always better to just pause and go ahead instead of just publishing something that's wrong. Um, on these equations right here, you know, I'm a little out of practice, so I forgot that n is number of moles, big N is total number of particles. So I decided to use this equation right here, which is the one that has little n. So instead of multiplying times Avogadro's number, I should have just used three and that's it. Um, so if thermal, if I put everything on my calculator, excluding this part over here, it's uh, 43.627 kilojoules. Final answer. Um, because I was sort of like mixing up these two equations. I, I used this equation that has the R. So this is the R, but then I was using uh, big N, which is Avogadro's number times number of moles, which would be using this equation. Now, it doesn't matter which equation you use because this is just a constant. This is just a constant. Temperature is going to be the same for both of them. One half is going to be the same for both of them. The only thing that's different is the if you're using the Boltzmann constant, you have to use big N. If you use uh, R, then you have to use little n. So I got them a little bit mixed up. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, again, if you want to calculate it, and I encourage you to do it, I calculated this answer using this um, equation. I'm going to go ahead and encourage you to calculate it using this equation. You'll see that so long as you use the proper n, then we're going to get to the same answer. A little bit of a confusion on that. I'm so sorry. Um, something to be mindful on the quiz, I guess. Okay, so the next thing that we have to figure out is what is the energy of a single mode? And that, again, is just a simple formula substitution because if I want to figure out the uh, single mode, a single mode would be one atom, just one mode. So I'm just basically going to substitute this e-thermal equation over here. So the e-thermal for just one mode oh, would be one half total number of atoms, which is just one, because I just want one atom, one mode, kV, T, times number of modes per particle, so that's times one again. So, oh, I didn't, there we go. Again, I'm doing just one atom, one mode, straight up substitution on the equation that was given on the quiz. So if we do this, the energy of a single mode, then that would be one half times one times kV, which is 1.38 times 10 to the negative two, three, times 500 and that is equal to 3.45 3.45 times 10 to the negative 21 yields final answer i had another way of doing it but i think that the best way instead of Using a key partition is just to straight up use the formula. Um, that is just way more straightforward. So that is the energy that we have like here. So now for part D, what is the average x direction velocity of a single particle of this gas? Assume mass of a single molecule is six times 10 to the negative 26. Okay, so we know that the translation modes, again, because of the tutorial, that the x direction velocity produces exactly one um, x direction 
velocity produces one kinetic energy trans mode. And we know exactly how much energy that has. So basically what we can do is because we know that the x direction correlates correlates to exactly one mode with exactly this energy all we have to do is just basically make them equal to each other so one half m b squared produces uh, 3.45 times 10 to the negative 21 joules we have the mass, so um, velocity is equal to 3.45 times 10 to the negative 21 multiplied by 2 because we send this multiplying divided by the mass, which is 6 times 10 to the negative 26, and then we take square root of that. So velocity, final answer is, let's see. So um, 3.45 times 10 to the negative 21 times two divided by six times 10 to the negative 26 close parenthesis close parenthesis answer square root 339.11 meters per second final answer all right so that's our final answer and now for the last problem um, let's see. Now we cool the gas to 300 and measure the heat capacity to be 62 joules per kilogram, uh, per Kelvin. I'm sorry. How many modes on average are active now? Classify the modes. Okay. So now our new heat capacity is. 62 joules Kelvin. And we also know from our equations that the quiz gave us that this is equal to number of moles times little c, which is one half r times number of moles per particle. So number of modes, I'm going to solve for the number of modes per particle. And this is equal to 62. The one half goes multiplying, so it becomes a two. Then we have to divide by three times um, Where's R? Oh, 8.31. Like this. And then our final answer should be, let's see, um, 62, 62 times two. And then we wanna divide that by three times 8.31. So that is 4.31. Nine seven, so basically around five modes are active. Uh, ugh, what's happening today? Active, and we have to classify them. So five modes are active. Something that we also saw in the tutorial that I just filmed is the order in which the modes are freezing out. So the first to freeze out are vibrational, then rotational, and then translational. 
if we lower the temperature and we started to see freezing out, the first ones would be vibrational. And that makes sense from uh, by looking at our answer because we had two vibrational. So these two are vibrational and basically they got frozen. So the only three that we have, uh, the only five that we have left are the three kinetic energy translational and the two kinetic energy rotational. So our answer makes perfect sense with what we did, the number that we got, everything makes sense. Okay, so this is the end of our practice problem. So this was a simple practice problem that basically requires uh, required us to go back into our review session of modes and also to start using our mode counting that we learn uh, in conjunction with the equations that we were given. So I hope that you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. That really helps our channel. And I will see you guys on the next video.